everybody. Welcome to the show. One year ago, tragedy struck Nashville, Tennessee. A former student opened fire at a Christian school, killing six people, including three students. Recently, I spoke with grieving parents who are taking action to keep schools safer. Body cam video shows Nashville police entering the school, racing toward gunfire to confront and take down the shooter, Audrey Hale. In the end, the shooting left three Covenant students and three staff members dead. Mary Joyce and Melissa Anderson, whose children attend the school, recall the day. The feeling of complete helplessness on that day and trying to do anything to get to my child. They could hear all of the gunshots and they, the children, some of them, one grabbed the Bible and, and started praying in their minds as they waited in that moment, hearing what was going on around them, they were preparing to be next. Their kids still feeling the trauma a year later. My nine-year-old, now 10-year-old, she just turned 10 a couple weeks ago. Um, doesn't sleep in her own bed yet. She still has nightmares. She is angry during the day over little things. And that's not our, that's not our child. I don't know how to parent that. Anderson says her son, a fourth grader at the time, refuses to open up about what happened. That is heartbreaking in itself because I don't want what he experienced on that second floor to be locked up inside of him. Covenant father of three, Brent Leatherwood. We now know that uh, that evil that day came very, very close uh, to two of our children. And uh, that's, that's hard to live with. A bond these parents all share. That grief really came over me in a wave a few weeks ago when I was sitting down with another mother um, in her home, and we were talking about what had happened. Our children were together that day. And, um, and just the emotions that I hadn't seen, because I try to hold those back when I'm in public, those emotions came over me. And I was just angry that I ha have, have to live this life. I'm angry for our community. That anger now the driving force behind a push for gun law changes and safe schools nationwide. Last August, Tennessee Republican Governor Bill Lee called a special session to address the issue. We say, look, we are conservative Christian families who I myself am a gun owner. Our families are gun owners and we own guns, yet we want safer gun laws. Those two can coexist. And we believe what we're asking is in line with the Second Amendment. No meaningful legislation passed in the special session. With nearly 350 U.S. school shootings in 2023, she argues the inaction sends mixed messages to kids. Children, we are going to send you to school to learn and learn about our country. But wait, you might die today. And this classroom that you're learning in and your desk might be blown to shreds and you might be in a war zone and some of your friends might die and you may die. Leatherwood, former executive director of the Tennessee Republican Party and Southern Baptist Convention leader, says the shooting has deepened his faith. So I don't want to say I'm in the same shoes as Job, but I think I'm asking some of those same questions that Job was. And I think that's okay, because I think our God is big enough to handle our questions. He also calls for urgent action. This is a, a place where I personally helped as a staff member usher through significant pro-life legislation. I think if we want to be consistent with that pro-life ethic, the same energy and uh, earnest uh, action that we do on behalf of that vulnerable child in the womb, we need to also do for that vulnerable child in the classroom. While Covenant students have been attending classes off campus, plans are to reopen the building. As Easter approaches, many hold on to the hope of the gospel. I ultimately pray for um, healing. I hope that we show witness to other communities that there is healing and there is um, also purpose in the pain and that a beautiful thing can come out of what happened in, in such a 
horrible, tragic situation. And coming up, a former Navy SEAL develops a defend protocol to address America's school shooting crisis. Don't go away. Well, sadly, school shootings are an epidemic here in the United States, leaving parents demanding action. School security is now a $3 billion a year business, and much of that spent on high-tech equipment. But as national security correspondent Caitlin Burke reports, some experts say the money would be better spent on training staff and students to recognize and respond to threats. On April 20th, 1999, two students walked into Columbine High School and opened fire. In the 24 years since 13 students were killed here, there have been nearly 380 school shootings, exposing hundreds of children to gun violence and revealing an epidemic that's yet to find its cure. Let's go! <laughs> Metro Police! In the aftermath of the Covenant school shooting in Nashville, children, parents, and officials once again find themselves struggling with how to keep schools safe. The children of this country are demanding action. Our classrooms have become killing fields. Is that acceptable? I don't think one piece of legislation solved this. We got to deal with mental illness. School security has grown to a $3 billion industry with investments in everything from video surveillance technology to bulletproof doors and electronic locks. And while technology is important, experts say it likely would not prevent the next attack. When people are the problem, people are always going to be the solution. Jimmy Graham is the CEO and founder of Abel Shepard, an elite active shooter training program in Denver, Colorado. Graham says it's people knowing exactly what to do in an emergency that saves lives. So I'll walk into an institution and I'll say, um, can I talk to this lady right here? And I say, ma'am, what would you do if you heard gunshots? She says, I don't know. I said, well, that's where we need to start. Drawing on his background as a Navy SEAL and involvement with the CIA's global response staff, Graham developed DEFEND. The acronym stands for Defense, Evacuate, Fortify, Emergency Medical Aid, Notify Others, and Dial 911 a strategy based on international safety protocols. There's an unbelievably efficient model for protecting our diplomats overseas, but not our children. Right? So why is that? Because it's the same model. Like that model, uh, what I've done is I've scaled it and said we don't need, some of this stuff is not applicable, but to bring that back home and place the, the, the principles, here's a defensive principle. To get to them, you have to go through me. Abel Shepard also provides training for those likely to respond to active shooter situations whether that be an individual, a security team, law enforcement, or even faculty. The training is reality-based, allowing those who go through it to experience live scenarios. Gun shot, gun out, be ready, be ready, be ready. Fire! Fire! Tell him to stay down, tell him to go down. Graham stresses that even with all the right tools, security plans won't work if school leaders don't maintain the proper environment. The best way to, would, to describe it would be this. I get a whole faculty together and I say, whose job is it to protect this place? And everybody at the same time says, mine. In 1999, as a first responder at Columbine, Deacon Ernie Martinez experienced the moment the country realized children weren't safe at school. The big wake up call was, was twofold, I think. Number one is their evil does exist uh, without, uh, without any reasons for it, right? And number two is, it woke us up to, uh, as not only a law enforcement community, but as a, as a community as a whole, that everybody should participate. Martinez, now retired after 40 years in law enforcement, is the director of deacons for the Archdiocese of Denver. Among his roles, helping schools in the Archdiocese come up with security plans. The important thing is, 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 is collaboration, leveraging assets, partnering with local law enforcement, because we have parishes and churches and schools all across northern Colorado. And everybody is in their own different financial statuses, right? So you need to partner with your local law enforcement. You need to partner with local schools, whether they're public schools or not. It's common sense steps like training and collaboration that experts believe provide schools the best chance at stopping an active shooter, since preventing them entirely is highly unlikely. We're unique, right? What, what does America have that other countries don't have? 
two things. One, a second amendment, and two, more guns than people. Uh, by most accounts, there's over 450 million guns uh, for just over 300 million people. Back in 2016, research from Johns Hopkins University found even the highest priced technology did nothing to help stop mass shootings. Researchers writing, quote, there is no universal school safety solution. No one technology will solve all school safety and security issues. The sheer number of schools and school districts across the country with different geography, funding, building construction and layout, demographics and priorities make each one different. What does school safety look like in our country? It looks as bad as Uvalde and as good as Tennessee and everything in the middle. Former D.C. Homeland Security Chief Donnell Harvin says it's important that people keep talking about school security even after the news cycle moves on. Many people are apathetic and have given up and many people are desensitized. And we can't allow that apathy and that um, that that kind of, you know, uh, mindset to take hold of the fact that the next shooter is planning and there's kids in that classroom. When it comes to school security, parents can also make a difference. The key is communication. Ask your child's school what they're doing, what they're not, and then don't stop asking until you get the right answer. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Denver, Colorado. Well, coming up, some good news in public schools. What started off as a prayer walk around public schools turns into a global ministry to put Bibles in schools. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. Well, we've been talking about school security and how we can keep our students safe, but switching gears, what started as a prayer walk around a public school has become a worldwide outreach because of the mission of a single teacher. More than 1,500 public school libraries in 43 states have Bibles. Mark Martin brings us her extraordinary story. Hi, my name is Hannah Salisbury, and I'm an elementary teacher in Virginia in a public school. We first introduced you to Hannah Salisbury in 2019. A public school teacher at the time, Salisbury told CBN News that God put it on her heart to donate Bibles to school libraries. I started to prayer walk around our school, and there was one particular day that I prayed that Jesus' name would be mentioned in the classrooms and hallways of our school. And little did I know that that prayer um, got answered in bigger ways than I could have imagined. Those bigger ways include the nonprofit organization Salisbury began, known as Bibles in Schools. And God really opened my eyes to realize if we have this old Bible in our school, how come we don't have a more engaging Bible that's fun, and that has pictures in it? Fast forward to today to see the ministry's global impact. Salisbury says her organization has provided Bibles to more than 1,500 school libraries in 43 states. In addition, Bibles in Schools has reached six countries outside the U.S. There was a pastor in South Africa, and he heard about Bibles in Schools from the 700 Club interview, and he said, I wanted to get started where I live. And he started donating it to a, library, a public library, a preschool, and another school, and he's having requests, just like us. We're, it's been just two years, but librarians are writing us back saying they want more copies because it gets checked out so much. Here is Salisbury's office in her house. She says the need has been so great that she resigned from teaching to work full-time on Bibles in schools. I never pictured going full-time with this. You know, I was just, I was doing this because I saw God moving, I saw him working, and I knew I had to be obedient to what he had called on my life, and he, this is what he wanted me to do, and I could see the need. Brief testimony of how the Lord has used Bibles in schools to impact our lives as a family and the children of God right here in Nairobi, Kenya. Abija and Kenya also learned about the ministry through the 700 Club. Kids in an after-school program needed the Bibles. Most of, actually almost all of them did not have a Bible. And I used to cry to God and wonder, how can I get Bibles to these children? As a stay-at-home mom now for the past five years, I really don't have a source of income yet and I don't know what to do, but I need Bibles for these children. So it became a cry in my heart. She reached out to us and of course my thought was, well, how are we gonna get Bibles to Kenya? 
Uh, but we were able to partner with Bible Society, and um, her brother drove three hours to get the Bibles, and we donated 50 engaging Bibles to those students that she teaches in the after-school program. Amazingly, she responded. That gave me such hope, and now the process began, and the rest is history. Thank you for the Bible. God bless you. God bless you. Kids overseas aren't the only ones benefiting from Bibles in schools. My favorite story in the Bible is when Jesus died on the cross for us, and that let me know how God loved us so much. It's easier for us to understand with that Action Bibles because most of the time we can't understand the words, so the pictures can help us. And they're also spreading the good news. Have you been able to show your Bible to any other kids? Um, yes, I've showed it to my cousins and my friends um, when they come to visit. Plus, they understand the big picture of Salisbury's work. I like how she put Bibles in the library because that's how people know that God is with us all the time and that how kids can read more about God and, he, and then that He loves us so much. The Bible is, is a living word and it's active. So just get the Bible in people's hands and God will, God will do His work and work through His word. Mark Martin, CBN News, Midlothian, Virginia. What a wonderful story. I love that story. Well, up next, we're going to be praying for our children and for our schools. Very important. So don't go away. Stay with us. We want to take a moment to pray for our students, our schools, for their safety. So let's join together in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to lift up our students, Lord God, across this country, our schools and the teachers, Lord God, across this country. Lord, I just speak right now, Psalm 91 blessings over our students, our schools, Lord God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would be a wall of fire around our students and around the schools, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would be their refuge and their fortress, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, against the spirit of violence. We pray against the spirit of murder, Lord God. And we pray, Lord, for a hedge of protection around our students and our schools. We pray for our lawmakers, Lord God. They need your wisdom. Would you give them wisdom, Father God, to do what it is you want them to do to help our students and our schools to be safe, Lord? We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your will would be done, Lord, in the laws of this land, that our children, Lord God, would be safe that our children would be protected. We rebuke the enemy, Father God, that is coming after our kids in our schools, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, for watchmen on the walls, Lord, to rise up and to pray, Lord God, protection for our students and our schools. We pray, Lord God, for those who've been impacted by school shootings. We pray for the students who've been scarred. We pray for parents. We pray for comfort. We pray for your peace and we pray for your love to surround them, Father God. Lord, have your way in our schools. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, that is going to do it for this week's prayer link, everybody. Stay connected with us on Instagram. That's at the prayer link. And until next time, God bless you all. And remember to keep praying because prayer really does move mountains. So keep praying in Jesus' name. God bless you.